What if it was told you that hiding under the hoods of millions of American trucks was a secret weapon? Not the flashiest, not the fastest, but something far more valuable, something that refused to die. For more than three decades, one engine kept America moving, while other engines came and went, breaking down and being replaced. This one just kept going, and going, and going. This is the story of Ford's legendary 300 cubic inch inline six-cylinder engine, the engine that literally built America. So, what was the secret? Why do mechanics with 50 years of experience still get misty-eyed talking about this engine? Why do farmers who've used every truck on the market swear this was the greatest engine ever made? Why does this legend refuse to die? Listen closely. Can you hear it? It wasn't the aggressive roar of a V8 muscle car. No, this was different. This was a deep, steady rumble. The kind of sound that told you something important was about to get done. It was the sound of reliability, the sound of work, the sound of a promise being kept day after day, year after year. In today's world, everything seems designed to break. Your phone slows down after two years. Your appliances die right after the warranty expires. Everything is disposable, replaceable, forgettable. But the Ford 300, this was something completely different. This engine was a complete freak of engineering. They didn't build it to last a few years. They built it to last forever, while every other company was in an arms race for horsepower and speed. Ford took a different path. They built the 300 for one single purpose, pure, unstoppable grunt. And because of that simple decision, this engine earned a legacy that today's complicated, computerized engines could only dream of. To understand the secret behind this marvel, we need to go back, way back, to where it all began. The year was 1965. America was massive. The economy was booming. Construction was everywhere. Farms were expanding. Businesses were growing. And the demand for trucks that could survive anything was exploding. Ford had a problem. They needed an engine for their F-Series trucks that was cheap to run and impossible to kill. They needed something that wouldn't let people down when they had a job to do. The answer surprised everyone. It wasn't a V8. Instead, Ford introduced a brand new family of inline six-cylinder engines. They started with the 240 cubic inch six. Good engine, solid engine, but then came its bigger, tougher brother. The 300, this 4.9 liter beast, was born from one beautifully simple idea. Make it strong. How do you build something truly indestructible? You start with the basics and you do them right. The 300 had a simple overhead valve design. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. Any mechanic with basic tools could work on it. Your neighbor could work on it. You could probably figure it out yourself. But here is where Ford's engineers showed their genius. The engine block and cylinder head were made of ridiculously heavy cast iron, not lightweight aluminum, not some new experimental material, just good old fashioned iron. Thick, heavy, almost indestructible iron. Why does this matter? Because cast iron can take a beating. It doesn't crack easily. It doesn't warp when it gets hot. It doesn't care if you forget to change the oil. It just sits there, absorbing punishment, refusing to quit. But the real secret, the crankshaft. The crankshaft is the literal backbone of any engine. It's what converts the up and down motion of the pistons into the rotating power that turns your wheels. In most engines, the crankshaft is held in place by four or maybe five main bearings. The Ford 300 had seven, seven massive main bearings spread evenly along the crankshaft, giving it insane stability and durability that other engines simply didn't have. This thing was designed to never flex, never bend, never give up under pressure. But wait, there's more. One of the most critical design choices was the gear-driven timing system. Most engines use a timing chain or timing belt to keep everything synchronized. Chains can stretch, belts can break, gears, gears just work. Year after year, decade after decade, here is what really set the Ford 300 apart. The entire design was low stress. What does that mean? 
Think about it this way. Some engines are like sprinters, always running at their maximum, always straining, always on the edge of braking. The Ford 300 was like a marathon runner who's only jogging. It was operating so far below its limits that nothing ever wore out. This wasn't a delicate engine. This wasn't something that needed to be babied or pampered. This was engineered from day one to be a complete and total survivor. Could it survive anything? You're about to find out. From the moment it launched in 1965 until its final year in 1996, the 4.9-liter inline six was the workhorse engine for the Ford F-Series, America's favorite truck. The truck that built modern America, it powered millions of F-100s, F-150s, F-250s, and even giant medium-duty trucks that hauled serious weight. It was the heart of the legendary Ford Bronco, the SUV that defined adventure. It ran in E-Series Econoline vans that every single tradesperson in the country depended on. Plumbers had it, electricians had it, carpenters had it, delivery drivers had it, but here is the interesting part. The Ford 300S reputation wasn't built on horsepower. In fact, the horsepower was pretty low, even back then. If you lined up a Ford 300 against a V8 in a drag race, you'd lose. Badly. So why did everyone love it? Two words. Low-end torque. A ridiculous, almost unbelievable amount of low-end torque. The kind of power that moves mountains of weight without breaking a sweat. The kind of power that matters when you're actually working. See, horsepower is great for going fast. But torque. Torque is what gets heavy things moving. Torque is what pulls a loaded trailer up a hill. Torque is what matters when you have a job to do. And the Ford 300 gave you all of its torque immediately. The second you touch the gas pedal, the power was there. The later fuel-injected models made an impressive 260 pound-feet of torque at a super low 2,000 revolute shins per minute. That's already amazing. But the older, carbureted versions, they gave you peak torque at just 1,600 revolutions per minute. Do you understand how insane that is? That meant the moment you let out the clutch, the engine was ready to work. You didn't need to rev it. You didn't need to wait for the power to build. The power was just sitting there, ready, waiting, eager to move whatever you needed moved. If you've ever had to tow a heavy trailer, you know that's everything. That's the difference between struggling up a hill and cruising up like it's nothing. This insane capability didn't go unnoticed. Ever get a package delivered by a big brown ups truck in the 70s, 80s, or 90s? There's a massive chance that a Ford 300 delivered it. Ups chose this engine for the exact same reasons farmers did. It was simple, it was strong, and it absolutely refused to die. When you're running a delivery business with thousands of trucks, reliability isn't just nice to have, it's everything, but it wasn't just ups. The industrial version of this engine was everywhere, powering water pumps on construction sites, running wood chippers for tree services, moving baggage tractors at airports, even pulling ski lifts up mountains. Think about that for a second. When businesses that depend on their equipment running every single day choose the same engine, what does that tell you? It tells you that engine is something special. So what made this engine literally unkillable? The massive cast iron construction was part of it, sure. But the real genius was in the overall design philosophy. The Ford 300 was what engineers call a square engine. It had a 4.0 inch bore and a 3.98 inch stroke, almost perfectly equal. This created a beautifully balanced engine that never had to strain to make power. Why does this matter? That long stroke was the key to the insane low RPM torque. And because it's an inline six cylinder engine, it's naturally smooth. All the cylinders fire in perfect sequence creating less vibration, putting less stress on everything inside. This low stress design philosophy was everywhere in the engine. It had a low compression ratio. That means the engine wasn't constantly fighting against itself with every piston stroke. This made it unbelievably forgiving. You could run cheap gas, 
you could run in extreme heat or extreme cold. The engine didn't care. Want to hear something crazy? The stories from people who have owned these engines are absolutely insane. We're not talking about a few lucky owners. We're talking about thousands and thousands of documented cases of superhuman durability. Stories of Ford 300s running for months with almost no oil. The dipstick would be bone dry and the engine would still be running. Any other engine would have seized up and died. The 300 just kept going. Stories of engines overheating to the point where the temperature gauge was maxed out. Temperatures that would have melted and warped other engines. The Ford 300 would cool down and fire right back up the next day. Stories of engines taking unbelievable abuse from owners who didn't know how to maintain them or didn't care or simply forgot. And still, impossibly, the engine would start right back up the next day. How common were high mileage 300? It wasn't unusual at all to see these trucks with their original engine still running strong at 300,000 miles. Some made it to 400,000 miles some even beyond that. The trucks themselves would often literally rust into dust around the engine. The body would be gone. The frame would be cracking, but that engine, that engine would be ready to drop into another truck and keep working. Ford paired this monster engine with some of the toughest manual transmissions ever built. Transmissions like the T18 and the NP435. These weren't car transmissions. These were truck transmissions built to the same philosophy as the engine itself. These transmissions featured something called a granny. First gear, a super low gear ratio, sometimes as low as 6.69 to one. What does that mean in practice? It means these trucks could basically crawl up a vertical wall. Okay, not literally vertical, but close. With that combination of low end torque and ultra low gearing, Getting thousands of pounds moving from a dead stop was effortless. Over its 31-year lifespan, the engine did improve. In 1987, Ford introduced electronic fuel injection. This made the engine more efficient, gave it slightly better power, and made it easier to start in cold weather. It was progress carefully implemented. But here is what's important. Even with the new technology, the heart of the engine never changed. That heavy cast iron block Still there, those seven main bearings. Still there, that overbuilt, indestructible design philosophy. Still, their Ford knew they had something special, something amazing, something that was working perfectly, and they weren't about to mess it up, chasing trends. The legacy of the Ford 300 isn't just about bore and stroke measurements. It isn't just about torque curves and compression ratios. It's about the stories. This is the engine that helped families build businesses from nothing. The engine that started reliably every freezing winter morning when nothing else would. The engine that was there when you needed it most. The engine that became part of people's lives, part of their memories, part of their families. This is the engine that never quit on someone when they had a deadline to meet. The engine that got the farmer to market. The engine that got the plumber to the emergency call. The engine that got you home. That's what builds a legend, not specifications, reliability, trust, being there when it counts. So, if this engine was so amazing, why did Ford stop making it? That's the question, isn't it? By the mid-1990s, the world was changing. Customer expectations were shifting. People wanted smoother, quieter vehicles. They wanted more horsepower, even if they'd never use it. They wanted modern conveniences and advanced features. New emissions laws were making it harder to keep producing the old engine design. The simple carburetor couldn't meet the new standards without expensive modifications. Even with fuel injection, the basic architecture was from a different era. Meanwhile, V-shaped engines were getting better. They were smaller and more compact, fitting better in the modern truck designs with lower, sleeker hoods. They could be built lighter while still making good power. The writing was on the wall. In 1996, the very last Ford 300 inline six rolled off the assembly line and was installed in a truck. After 31 years of faithful service, production ended. It was replaced by the new 4.2 liter SXV6 for the 1997 F-150. 
An era had ended, or had it. The end of production was nowhere near the end of the story. The Ford 300 is still a complete legend in the automotive community today. Search online and you'll find passionate fans, active forums, and enthusiasts who refuse to let this engine be forgotten. Why? Because it's so simple and durable that it's become a favorite for restorations. People are pulling these engines out of junkyards, rebuilding them with basic tools, and dropping them into project trucks. They run for decades more. It's also popular for engine swaps. Need a reliable engine for a custom build? The Ford 300 is there, ready to work. But here is where it gets really interesting. There's a huge and growing community of people adding turbochargers and high-performance parts to wake up the sleeping giant inside that 300. With modern technology, this engine that was never about horsepower can make serious power while maintaining its legendary reliability. The aftermarket support is still strong. You can still buy parts. You can still find mechanics who know these engines inside and out. The knowledge hasn't been lost. The Ford 300 inline six is a monument to a different time in engineering. A time when being indestructible was the ultimate goal. A time when simplicity was valued over complexity. A time when an engine was judged, not by how fast it could go, but by how long it would last. It was never the fastest. That was never the point. It was never the fanciest. It didn't need to be. It was something far more important. It was dependable. It was the unstoppable, unkillable heart of the American workhorse. An engine that didn't just power trucks. An engine that powered dreams. An engine that built businesses. An engine that built a nation. Here is what I want you to think about in a world where everything is designed to be replaced. Where planned obsolescence is the norm. Where nothing is built to last anymore. What would it take to create another Ford 300? Could we even do it today? Would manufacturers want to? Would customers appreciate it? Or was the Ford 300 a product of a unique moment in history? When the stars aligned perfectly. When the right engineers with the right philosophy had the freedom to build something truly special. Maybe that's what makes it a legend, not just what it was, but what it represented. A commitment to quality over profit. A commitment to durability over novelty. A commitment to the customer, the worker, the person who depended on that engine to make a living. Got a Ford 300 story? Share it in the comments below. We want to hear them all. If you enjoyed this legend, smash that subscribe button and share this with your truck-loving friends.